My name is Jason Sewell. I am one of the hosts of Good Day NWA, the lifestyle show that airs on KNWA. And you're here in the KNWA Fox 24 newsroom. Here's the deal. We couldn't come and be with you in person this year to have the workshops and meet you and shake your hand and talk to you. So we're doing something a little special. We're going to give you a chance to meet all of the people who helped make news happen here at KNWA and Fox 24. We're going to speak with folks in the newsroom. We're going to go into the Weather Center. We're going to go into our production booth. We're going to go on the set itself, and we're going to meet all the people who make it happen. Let's go. Let's meet Lisa Brintz, the news director. I am the news director of the station, so I help craft what the news, weather, and sports departments are going to look like for viewers at home. A large part of my job is hiring the talent, um, helping uh, work with other managers to figure out how are we gonna train these people? How are we gonna teach them about what matters to the folks in Northwest Arkansas? Why would we do this story over that story? Why is this story worth a reporter's eight or nine, 10, 11 hour a day versus maybe 15 to 20 seconds in a newscast? So there's a lot of strategy that goes into it, a lot of research and a lot of just general knowledge. This is one of my favorite things to talk with students about and here's why. When I started here when I was 18 years old, I was very young, a fresh out of high school, college student. Um, I had some background in production, uh, you know, and was able to, to start working here, being paid in, in doing production jobs. I wrote teleprompter on the morning show, which meant I got to wake up super early in the morning, which is not a lot of fun when you're 18 years old. Um, but I would say it was definitely worth it and paid off in the end. So uh, I started learning everything I could in the production department. Started with, you know, uh, cameras and teleprompter. It went on to learning to edit video, um, learning to make graphics, and then completing my college degree while I worked here full time, being able to write, being able to help learn to produce. So I come from really a, a production and producing background. It took me, you know, several years to get to this role, but it's just a hunger for learning, trying new and different things, um, being outspoken and asking, you know, hey, what can I learn? Do you need help? How do I learn to do that? And that's really how it all began. Here's our weekend anchor, Crystal Martinez, who is also a multimedia journalist. You can see me out on the field reporting. I also edit my own work and most of the time do film it. And I'm also the weekend anchor. So on the weekends, you'll see me behind the desk. So in the morning, I start off my days making phone calls. I'm calling sheriffs, police chiefs, uh, fire chiefs, big community leaders, just asking, hey, what's going on today? Also checking some local newspapers to see what's going on. By the time I kind of have like a gathering of three stories, we have our afternoon meeting. We discuss what we're going to do that day. And then I hit the road, talking to people, getting video, come back, edit everything and get ready to present it to you all in the evening shows. So I went to school at the University of North Texas and I did study broadcast journalism there, which I have to give all the credit to that university. Um, great training. We had like a mock TV news station where, yes, we messed up. We made mistakes. We learned how to pull through that and kind of laugh at it. And then I got an internship at News 12, which is this small station in Sherman, Texas. Uh, luckily, after my internship, I got hired there. <laughs> so I did news there in a bureau which is disconnected from the main station. I did that for about two years. Uh, it was a small town, but I loved every minute of it because you got to kind of see a different community than what I was actually raised in being from Dallas. So that helped me a lot to shape me up and get me ready for what I was gonna be brought into here in Northwest Arkansas. Well, I would say two things. One, you have to be passionate about this job. It asks a lot from you, emotionally, physically, mentally, but if you're passionate about it and you're passionate about storytelling, this will be right for you. I'd also say invest in your community. The best way you're gonna know what your viewers wanna see is by diving yourself into that community. Volunteer, go out to the farmer's market or local events. Really get to know the people you are serving because you are a public servant. Meet Ben Gilbert, digital media manager. Um, my job is to check the web stories for punctuation errors, grammar errors, stuff like that. Make sure everything got posted along with some video um, and just to see what's, what's the uh, trending stories of the day. I went to college for newspapers and stuff like that and wound up in the broadcast business. So I translated pretty well from newspapers to broadcast because it's kind of the same skill set. Whenever I got here, I learned how to stream video, breaking news events, um, kind of just learning how a newsroom works, basically. Sometimes it can be a high stressful job, but it's very fun. So if you're into current events, you know, just a fun atmosphere, um, I suggest coming to news because, you know, you, you will learn a lot quickly, get a lot thrown at you, but if, you're, if you'd like to handle it, this is the profession for you. Here's Chelsea Helms. She's an anchor. 
Well, here at the station, I am the main evening co-anchor for KNWA News. So I anchor our uh, 5, 6, and 10 p.m. broadcasts alongside Chad Mira, who's my co-anchor. And every day we work to approve our reporter scripts. Before they even write the scripts, we have a hand in approving what stories they're going out and shooting. We have a big hand in what everyone at home sees in our newscasts. And of course, uh, we work alongside our reporters and our meteorologists to put out the product every day for anyone who's watching. We have to be at the station by 1.30 every day, but my technical work day starts long before I'm even in the building. I wake up in the morning, I'm scrolling through social media, seeing what our local businesses are posting about. I'm seeing what, you know, other stations in our area are covering. I'm watching national news media to see if there's anything on there that might have some appeal to our local audience. I'm reading different articles, listening to NPR on my way to work. So it starts long before you even walk into the station. And then when you get into the station, we have our meeting every day at 1 30. It's our editorial meeting, which is when we decide what is going in the newscast. And then of course you have to put it all together. Together. So right after we get out of that meeting, we are recording radio cut-ins. Those are just quick news updates that play over the radio. We're recording what are called as promos. Those air during different primetime shows leading into our newscast. And then we actually have to anchor the newscast. So getting into that newscast, we are approving scripts before we go on air. And then we are in this studio for 30 minutes, sometimes a little longer, depending on how long the show is slated for. Just making sure that that product goes over air. And uh, after the five o'clock, we prepare for the six o'clock. After the six o'clock, we prepare for the 10 o'clock. So a lot of uh, meeting deadlines and uh, just trying to make the process really as seamless as possible. You know, we pride ourselves on uh, public service. So constantly we are hosting events for the community, whether that's, you know, the local Komen Ozark, the Breast Cancer Foundation. We also uh, are big supporters of the cancer challenge in the community. So we aren't just people who are on TV in this place. This is our home as well. I was privileged for several weeks to host a segment for the American Heart Association. That's something that means a lot to me. And I was able to have a voice for their organization. So it, it's just a great entanglement, you could say, of, uh, of the businesses together. We had the chance to chat with Jillian Wirtz, producer. I produce the 9 o'clock primarily. Um, I also jump in and help do our 5.30 uh, p.m. show as well. I have helped fill in during the weekends, and I get to do some fun stuff like uh, weather. When we have crazy weather, I get to come in. A lot of times that's on the weekends, but primarily it's Monday through Friday. So since I do our p.m. shows, I get here about 1.30, and I end up leaving around 10 o'clock. Of course, if there's something fun like the World Series, I get to be here even later. Essentially, my workday starts right when I get there. I'm kind of looking at everything that's happening and we have our PM meeting. All of our reporters come in and they pitch all of their stories. So we kind of know what's happening throughout the day, what stories I need to do. We also have a long list of stories that I'm able to write too. So I love writing and I love that I have that ability. I went to Missouri Southern and I went to school to be a reporter. So totally different um, job and I actually didn't learn a whole lot about producing. So when I got into this job, they were kind of like, you know, if you want to learn the ins and outs of being a reporter, you should definitely start, you know, being a producer. So you're kind of learning stuff behind the scenes. I just really loved it and I stuck with it. Definitely the most stressful is breaking news and, you know, getting everything in there really quick. But that's also one of my favorite parts about the job. And it's, it's always changing and it's always something new. You love it or you hate it. And it's just like, I, I think I like working under pressure. It kind of gets you going, but um, learn to love it even more. Here's Alyssa Orange, sports anchor. It's a fun gig because we really just focus on the University of Arkansas and their athletics and the SEC. So I'll get here between 1.30 and 2 o'clock and we'll start kind of putting the show together, you know, the big stories of the day. Maybe we've talked to players or coaches throughout the day and like the big sound bites we get from that or maybe it's something we did the day before that we can pull sound from uh, and we'll stack the shows. Uh, and when I say we, I have, you know, Jason, Tara, and Mike here most of the time too, so it's not just myself. Then we put it in our thing called a rundown, which is how we build our show, and then we'll type out our scripts and do all that kind of stuff. If we have a game, we go to the game. We could be live at the game. We'll do post-game analysis. Don't be discouraged if you don't get a sports job right off the bat. I started in television as a morning producer. 
and then I became a noon reporter, and then I was like an internet reporter, and then I finally got my foot in the, in the sports office job at the station I was in in Tallahassee because they knew that's where I wanted to go, but as long as you just get your foot in the door and you you know, you know tell your news director, hey, I'll, I'll go shoot high school football today. I might be a morning producer, but I don't mind doing that, or you know, really just reaching out to the people who are where you want to be and you know, I've been able to be here now for so long that I was here when Sam Pittman was an offensive line coach, right? And now he's back as the head coach and I've been able to see a lot of these players come through now. You know, I won't age myself. I've seen a lot of <laughs> a lot of classes come through now, but I think that's probably my favorite part is just the relationships you build. Meet Garrett Ferguson, assignment manager. I you know, assist the uh, producers by, you know, gathering in content. Uh, I help assign stories out for the photographers. Uh, I help uh, with the reporters developing story ideas. So a little bit uh, of, you know, within the newsroom, talking with the different departments and, and working with logistics there. One area that really stands out is, especially during severe weather season, that's always a lot of moving parts by coordinating with the weather team, our storm spotters, uh, getting reporters or photographers there. Uh, so there's a lot of figuring out who can go where, uh, and that all ties into you know some of the things that I'm monitoring on, on a daily basis. Really being organized is the biggest key. Uh, we've got a program that we use uh, that helps me uh, you know, visually see what's going in what show or what's going where and when is something happening. I do have to you know, hit certain goals throughout the day, making sure that we're on top of, of every little detail. Five o'clock is coming no matter what happens. And if I can't hit that deadline of five o'clock of making sure that everybody has what they need in a timely fashion, then that just runs into more errors and it's just a trickle down effect. You know, we're, we're all good friends here. Uh, you know, having a good working relationship with everybody here in the newsroom, it only makes me want to come to work. You know, I just want to be here with everybody. Here's Charles Bostick, production manager and also a director at the station. I manage the production staff, so morning crew has a group of people that work together. The evening crew has a group of people that work together. I hire all of them. We try to get them trained up so we can do newscasts. The other part of my job is putting things into the system that we use on air, whether it be graphical elements, um, news tickers, you know, stuff to that effect. Well, I started out here 16 years ago um, as a part-timer, as a camera operator. I was working at a radio station in conjunction with this. Um, finally got on full time directing the morning show and then moved to evenings and now here I am in the production manager job. One thing I'll tell people not to do is turn down opportunities. I've seen many people just turn something down because they don't have the time to do it. Well if you're going to get started on something you need to, it's better to get started early. You know I mean I didn't have the, the privilege of having a TV station next to my university but a lot of the students at the U of A do. So if you get that opportunity to take, then I would just go for it. Meet John Cumston, chief photographer. What I like about this job is that we get inside the ropes, inside the tape on so many different things in politics, community, sports, and sometimes on a national scale. We've, we've done work with the, with the White House, with Congress, all kinds of Law enforcement activity, you can imagine, uh, you know, sometimes the news is not good. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be there for that too. We believe that an informed public is a free public. So as chief, I uh, have an administrative component to my job. I manage uh, the other photographers and to some extent are reporters that go out in the field, multimedia journalists that is. In my senior year at the University of Arkansas, I did two internships, which was my introduction into cameras and shooting. Uh, from there, I was very fortunate to get a job at a film and video production company here in Springdale, Arkansas. I spent eight years with them and learned one heck of a lot about shooting and lighting and sound recording. I saw an opportunity in the news business and I took a job as a cam op, as a matter of fact. I started uh, just a little over 20 years ago now at one of our competitor stations here as a camera operator. And that also uh, coattails onto some of the other remarks I've heard where it's a matter of taking an opportunity when one presents itself. It may not, you know, I didn't necessarily want to stay as, in as a cam operator. I actually was applying for a photographer position. 
um, but they didn't have an opening, so they said, we, we do have a cam op opening, would you like that? And I said, sure. So I was a cam op for about three months. Um, then a photographer job opened and I took that. And so I've been doing that for about the last 20 years. One of the things I love about my job is that I never know when I get out of bed in the morning what I'm gonna be doing that day. That doesn't mean that it's always gonna be fun or enjoyable because it, it oftentimes is not. Uh, but that not knowing, and sometimes that not knowing turns into uh, flying around in a helicopter, shooting video from a helicopter. Sometimes it involves uh, being on a fast boat out on the lake. Sometimes it involves being on a train, you know, in a train engine shooting. Uh, sometimes it involves very interesting people and personalities. There are so many different things that we can get into that go on in our community, in our state, and nationally um, that I, I never get bored at this job. I would like to add that photojournalists, it requires a certain mental and physical resiliency, uh, a certain toughness, and when I say toughness, and I've said this to many a photographer and reporter, it doesn't mean the kind of toughness where you go down to Dixon Street and kick over someone's motorcycle. A resiliency in the face of adverse conditions, whether they're weather conditions or from time to time something that's really rough to cover mentally or spiritually, we are obliged to find a way to manage that, all of those different kinds of situations and always return a product that either makes or exceeds the standard that we set here at the station. Uh, so I would want people to be thinking about that too. It's, uh, it's not all glamour. We had the chance to catch up with Dan Scoff, Chief Meteorologist. I am essentially the head of the weather department and I make sure that we try to tell a story of what the weather is going to do each day. Some days are crazier than others and just make sure that our weather team is a well-oiled machine. I have to make sure that we have an accurate and uh, understandable forecast so people can plan for their day and can figure out what they need to know about the weather, how it impacts them, and then we portray that story on the air. And it was a tornado that came really close to my house uh, from where I'm at, uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's where I was born. And um, after that tornado and seeing the damage around, that just solidified it for me. So if you have that spark, if you have that passion, I urge you to, you know, to look into it. Now, you have to take a lot of math and a lot of science in college, so that's one thing you'll have to do. So I went to a, a university and, and got my Bachelor of Science in Meteorology. There is a lot of math and a lot of science behind uh, the, um, you know, the science of weather, uh, and we have to understand how the weather works. We have to under, understand how the weather works here, too. I mean, and essentially, that's what that's what our job is. There's one thing that I'm known for is the Fayetteville fizzle. Cause it's the Fayetteville fizzle. Yeah, you know, I like to make the weather fun. I always have this saying, if the weather is serious, you're not going to see anybody or know anybody more serious than me about the weather. But if it's, uh, you know, it's quiet, there's not much going on, it's not life-threatening, there's no worries, why not have a little fun and deliver the forecast in a... Uh, an entertaining way. That's it. That's what it takes to make news here at KNWA and Fox 24. From weather to the sports team, to the folks behind the scenes in the production booth, all the way to the on-camera talent, you've heard it all. You've heard how resilient you need to be. You've heard how this is a high energy, fast paced working environment. And we hope that if anything, you continue to pursue a career in broadcast journalism. I'm Jason Sewell for KNWA and Fox 24.